This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper was in Grand Bahama on Thursday for the introduction of the new board that will begin the process of finding a new buyer for the Grand Lucayan Waterfront Resort. The board, led by Chairman Julian Russell, a chartered accountant and former senator, will have the responsibility to attract new investors, assist with negotiations, and close the deal for the final sale of the property. The DPM says the new board has deep experience in tourism law, accounting, and the Grand Bahama business community. Minister Cooper said the government has worked diligently to terminate the previous deal and now it is moving forward to find a new partner and a new investor for the resort. Mr. Cooper noted that there are at least six investors who have expressed serious interest in the purchase of the Grand Lucayan. He said the government will be drawing heavily on the new board to cause the Grand Lucayan development to happen in the shortest time frame. Financial Secretary Simon Wilson noted that finance experts have been having issues on getting a better understanding of the true picture of the former government's COVID-19 spending during the state of emergency. On January 1st, the VAT, the VAT rate reduced from 12% to 10%. That was the, the overall headline there. But there's some other important changes that happened on January 1st with respect to VAT. On January 1st, offshore financial services were moved from exempt, zero rated, back there to July 1st, 2019. For the offshore financial services sector, that's a very important change. It meant for them that their tax liability for the government effectively became zero. Many of them were facing significant tax liabilities because of a change that was made in 2019. In addition, domestic zero rating of goods were eliminated. And in the media, that's referred to as bread basket, applying that on bread basket goods. Active officials have started to gather that information. Mr. Wilson noted that officials have indeed already begun, starting with the National Food Distribution Task Force program, but the information was not readily available. While in opposition, Prime Minister Philip Davis questioned the government's COVID-19 spending, along with why the government had refused to reveal associated vendors, among other things. And corporate Bahamas flexes its philanthropic muscles today as the Atlantis Resort donates a generous supply of canned goods and clothing to the Agape House of the Family of Murder Victims Organization, or FOAM. Carrie Turnquest, Atlantis Director of Food and Beverage, speaks to what motivated the mega resort to take on such an initiative. One of our team members here at Atlantis was involved with the Agape House and had an understanding of the need that is at the Agape House and throughout the island. And so he reached out to several of our departments on what we can do. And so we put it to the wider Atlantis community for a donation of canned goods as well as gently used clothing. And honestly, the response was truly overwhelming. We received over 1,400 individual articles of gently used clothing and over 2,200 pounds of canned goods. In addition to the physical goods, the team at Atlantis also donated some $4,000 to the Agape House to aid them in their COVID relief efforts to better assist them as they try to better assist those in need during these difficult times. Director of Agape House and Foam, Ms. Candy Gibson, shares her thoughts on, on receiving this donation at such a crucial time for her organization. It means a lot when uh, Mr. Lovato and Mr. Brandon reach out to me on behalf of their manager, Mr. When they reached out to me and they said I could form an organization, our Agape House and Project, it meant so much because during COVID-19, we extended our arm um, so long to the Bahamian public. We didn't we made sure no one was turned away. And when it came down to nitty gritty for us to turn someone away, that means we obviously didn't have it. So I want to thank the Atlantis Community Outreach, along with the executive management team that really supported our organization, especially during this time, because um, I went to, to my office many days, many weeks, without having nothing to provide for the Bahamian people 
other than a prayer. And so there were times I couldn't even pay my staff, but I still went to work and I still perform the lepers know at the end of the day there is still hope in our community and there is God above all things. Ms. Gibson also stressed the importance of donations such as this one from corporate entities that have a capacity to give back to the community and impact lives. She also shares this message with those that may be hurting and disenfranchised in these difficult times. My message was say push me because during COVID, it was rough for me too because and then they, I face with my bills too. You know, you go out there and you push it for the people, but you don't know how your bills can get paid. All I know is God real and there's a God above. So I tell anybody, don't give up. Trust someone out there, see you by someone out there. Have your, God put your name and someone mouth to be a blessing. So you'll continue trusting God. So I could say, and then I would say again, thanks to Atlantis, your donation today goes a mighty, mighty long way. Companies and or individuals interested in donating to this charitable cause can contact Ms. Candy Gibson or the FOAM organization directly via their Facebook page. Well, that does it for news this evening. Once again, I'm Leah Cooper. And from all of us here at JCN News, have a wonderful weekend, everyone. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.